Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Carl D'Souza. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. Today we're going to take a look at uh, the behavior of subgrids and what happens when you double click on them and how to change that behavior so that it opens a new uh, feature of release wave one called modal forms. Okay, so the first thing we'll want to do is head over to the Power Platform Admin Center and for your org just make sure that you are running release wave one of 2020. Um, if you are not running it you can enable it uh, but what you'll want to do is go to your environments, uh, select your environment, uh, you'll end up on this page here and then uh, you'll basically have the option to enable 2020 release wave one and once you've done that, uh, as you can see here in my org, uh, you'll see that it's, um, it's all enabled and turned on, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this org and let's go uh, and take a look at a subgrid and we'll see how the behavior works currently. So I'm gonna browse out to accounts and I'll select an account. And we can see here we have this subgrid uh, for each account record called contacts, okay? So for, for this account, uh, we see that there are two contacts associated with this account. And if a user were to click into uh, one of these account, uh, one of these contact records, what's gonna happen is it will open the contact record in place over the account record, right? So, um, you know, that's okay in, in many situations, but you may have a specific requirement uh, in your organization or for your clients where you don't want to actually take them over to the, the contact record, but you want to keep them on the account record. So one of the features of release wave one is modal forms. And I did a video on this and I'll put it down in the description below. Um, but basically uh, with modal forms, uh, you get the ability to actually open the form on top of the current form as a modal dialogue. So it keeps the user on the uh, background form but they also get to interact with a foreground form. And then uh, from there, you know, they can make some updates or do whatever they need to view information. And then they can close that modal form and they'll get back to this account form or the background form. So it's very, it's very cool how it works. And so uh, what we'll do is we're going to um, make some customizations to this form, the account form, and then we'll get uh, the contact form when it's clicked on to open up as a uh, foreground uh, modal form. Um, instead of taking the user over to the contact page itself in a different uh, window clearing out the account record, okay? So let's look at how to do this. So first thing you'll wanna do is uh, head over to make.powerapps.com and select your environment in the top right. And what we'll do is let's go ahead and uh, create a new solution. So if we click on solutions, let's click new solution and we'll call this uh, contact modal form and let's choose a publisher and we'll click create. So that uh, solution has been created. Let's go ahead and jump into it and let's go ahead and add an existing uh, entity and we'll select account here, click next. And then here let's go ahead and select components and we'll select forms and we will be making uh, changes to the account form. So we'll select the account form at the top here and we'll click add, and then we'll click add again. So now if we go into this form, um, into this entity, and then hop on over to forms, we have our account main form here. So let's go ahead and click on it. So this is the form designer. Um, so we can make changes to uh, the layout of the account record here. Um, you know, we can add and remove new fields. We can add functionality. Um, one of the things I'm just going to do to make things a little easier for our demo here is I'm going to um, grab this subgrid, which is the one that we've been using, and just put this up here in the middle. So, um, so now basically it's just going to be in the middle of the form. It'll be a little bit larger as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm just going to uh, save this. And now I'm just going to go and click uh, switch over to classic here. So this is going to give us a little bit more capabilities. Um, 
you know, Microsoft is migrating a lot of features over from the classic view into the new view, uh, but not everything is really quite there yet. So, you know, you have to kind of switch between the two. So, um, so who are on the classic view and we have our contact subgrid here. Let's go ahead and click change properties. And if we go over and click on the controls tab, we can see that this is a read only grid, right? Um, so what we're going to do is we'll change this uh, to use an editable grid. And the reason we're doing this is so that we can get a uh, new event available to us that will be um, running when the user actually double clicks on the records. So, you know, there are other ways you can do this um, with read only grids, but you know, for the sake of this uh, presentation, let's just go ahead and make this an editable grid and um, we'll go through it that way. So the way to change this from the read only grid is to click on the add control. And this gives us a whole bunch of controls here available for this subgrid. Okay. So um, what we'll do is we'll make this editable grid and we'll click add. And once you've added it, you can see that the, um, the options haven't actually been selected here. Um, so, um, for example, you know, if you are accessing this, uh, a, an account record from the web on this form, then, you know, it's still going to use the read only grid. So let's go ahead and click editable grid. Um, and we'll make sure that that's, um, you know, uh, accessible now through the web. So now that that's done, we get this, uh, events tab here, right? So if I click on events, and you'll note that that wasn't there before when we had the read-only grid. Um, we now have a bunch of events available to us um, which weren't there before. So the useful one for us is going to be on record select. And um, so when the record, a record is selected by a user, this is where we're going to run some JavaScript code to pop that modal dialog. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and add a form library to this uh, form. We'll click add and let's click new and let's go ahead and give this a name. We'll call this uh, uh, contact modal.js and contact modal.js and this type here will be a JScript and let's go ahead and click the text editor. And here's where we can add our JavaScript. So um, the easiest way to grab this JavaScript is I'm just going to head back over to my blog post and let's go scroll down. And you can see these are all the steps that we've already uh, been doing. And we are now up to this point here. So this is the code that we want to use. Let's go ahead and grab this. And let's paste it into here. And let's just take a quick look at the code, right? So what this is doing is we have a function that's called run on selected and it will, um, we're saying that the selected variable is going to be set to the execution context, which is what we'll pass in to this script when we wire it up to this form. And, um, we're doing a get form context data entity. And what that will give us is the ID of the record selected. Okay. Um, once we have the ID, um, we can go and then run this code below. And what this code does is it basically, uh, sets up the modal form to be opened. And we are, um, setting this here to be a position of one. Um, so it's going to open up in the middle of the form. You know, uh, we can also open it on the side of the form, like in the way that a quick create opens, but we're going to open up in the middle of the form. We're going to give it a uh, height uh, and a width of 50% of the form. And um, then we'll use this uh, XRM navigation dot navigate to, to uh, open up this, um, to open up the form based on the parameters that we've passed in. Okay. So pretty simple. Um, let's go ahead and copy this run on selected. We'll click okay. And we'll click save and publish. And let's close this and let's go back to our form. We'll select this as the JavaScript and let's click add. We will select the library that we chose and let's paste in the function name 
and we want to make sure that we select this pass execution context as first parameter. So we have that selected, let's click OK, and now that's wired up, we'll click OK. Let's go ahead and save and publish this form. Okay, great. So now let's go and try and test this out. So if we click on um, an account and let's go ahead and refresh this page. So we should see the contact subgrid come back into the middle of the um, uh, form here based on our new layout. So there it is. And so now what happens is if we click into each row, for example, if I click on Susan Burke, um, we get this modal dialogue appearing, right? So uh, that's the new code in action. Um, the, the modal form opens, as it's at 50% of the height and width. Um, we get to see this contact record. Uh, we see, you know, the entire record here as we would if we were to navigate over to it previously, but we're not leaving the account record, right? So a user could uh, look at this and say, okay, yeah, great. These are all the fields. This is the contact I was uh, looking to, to view. They can click close here. Um, they could say, actually, you know what? I want to see this other contact. Let me click on this contact. And this will open up in a modal dialogue. Um, you know, they can enter full screen mode here to, uh, to view it uh, in full screen if they wanted to. They could also, you know, exit full screen mode or they could just uh, close this and we're still in the account form, right? So it's pretty awesome. Um, if they decided to actually uh, navigate over to the contact form, they can still do that. Um, you know, so we can click on this navigate to here. If we click on that, it's just going to open up the contact as it would normally. So that's it. That's, uh, you know, one of the applications of how we can use release wave one. Um, you know, go ahead and enable Release Wave 1, add some code, um, and uh, start using these modal dialogues. So that's it, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, check out my blog at carldesuza.com. Thank you.